Hello everyone once again and thank you for joining us today for this presentation. Welcome, my name is Stephen Primo and I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading as you see right here in front of you. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about Specialist Trading, we are an educational company. If you've attended my presentations in the past, you know that we're all about teaching traders how to be, become better traders and it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or you're a seasoned trader, someone who's been trading for 10, 20, 30 years. We always have enough information to hopefully elevate your trading and get you on that road to consistency. Now, just to give you a little bit of background about myself, if this is the first time you've uh, seen my presentation, I've been trading for 36 years. I started out on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was a specialist there, hence the name Specialist Trading. This is the person that made the markets in roughly over 50 stocks. I traded through a tremendous amount of uh, environments, crashes, and straight up markets and straight down markets. Uh, once I left the floor in the mid-90s, uh, after being on the floor for a total of 16 years, I just about experimented with each and every market there was, from the E-mini futures to ultimately the Forex. And I think even though my background is in stocks, I think that everything that I learned in my 36 years of trading really transfers over extremely well into the Forex markets because what I teach and what I personally trade are trend following types of strategies. Uh, the the uh, main thing I try to do is go with the market, never trying to pick tops and bottoms, and I'll go into detail on that in just a little bit. But uh, I try to go with the flow, and what I do mainly is tell you techniques and tips on how to find out what the trend is. So all of my uh, strategies, all of my methodologies work tremendously with the Forex markets. And so what I want to share with you today and what we're going to be talking about today is a powerful technique for capturing trending markets because you know most people have heard the adage well you know the trend is your friend uh, trade with the trend but still 80 percent of all traders ultimately lose and I think one of the main reasons is because they're they don't have a proper understanding of what the trend is if you talk to a number of traders a number of educators a number of presenters everyone probably has a different idea of how to find the trend or what the trend is. A lot of traders will look at higher time frames to confirm the lower time frame. Other traders will simply look at a mass of indicators and if they all line up then you have an uptrend or a downtrend. Well we're going to show you a very simple and easy way to discern what the trend is and this is a powerful powerful technique for capturing trending markets. And this is part one in the series. I will continue the second part of this series in May, in the beginning of May. But for right now, let's just talk about how we're going to spot these uh, major trending markets. Now, uh, before we begin, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about what FX Street has done for specialist trading. They provided us with a micro site. I know a lot of people who are new to uh, my presentations are not aware of what we do or who we are. Well, if you Click on this link, and I know it's a little bit lengthy there, so what you can do is we've shortened it to here, this bottom portion in yellow. Uh, that's the abbreviated link to FX Street's uh, uh, small little link to us, to our uh, micro uh, site. And you'll find out more information about specialist trading and about myself. Once you click on that link, you'll come to this page here, and you'll see information about myself, Stephen Primo, as well about the strategies that we teach. And as you, you can see right here, circled in green, there's where we go into the course description. So there's lots of ways to find information out about specialist trading. Simply click on that micro site that FX Street has provided for us. Now, before we begin, we're required to show you this. I ask that you please take a moment to view your disclaimer. I'm going to show you some performance results using this powerful technique for capturing trending markets. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results we're about to show you will be repeated in the future. So as you're taking a moment to view our disclaimer, I'd also like to mention, for those of you who have attended my presentations in the past, you know that I love to take questions, but at the very end of the presentation. So for you new viewers, <coughs> excuse me, if you happen to have a question during the webinar, please write it down or try to remember it. I promise I'll get to it at the very end, but the presentation seems to flow a lot better if we just wait to the last 10 or 15 minutes. This won't be real long, and then we'll reserve a good 10 or 15 minutes for any questions that you may have. If you happen to come up with a question once we've concluded, don't worry. I will leave you with a phone number as well as an email address where you can contact us and ask us more questions. So there's lots of ways to have your questions answered. Just kindly wait till the very end, okay? Now, as I stated in the beginning, why don't we begin? As I stated, we are an educational company. Even though we provide all of our members in the Forex courses with uh, generated signals, in other words, we provide you with signals telling you to go long and short, where to place your stop, where to uh, exit, 
uh, we really are more about teaching you so that you can understand and fully spot these on your own. Ultimately, it'll take you some, maybe some traders take a couple of weeks, others take a couple of months. But ultimately, we want you to spot these on your own because my goal is not to trade for you the way some sites do and have uh, trading rooms where we tell you exactly what to do, but really my goal is to teach you how to trade with the specialist edge. I had a very difficult time when I first became a specialist. I was trading probably the way 90% of all traders trade, and that's by trying to pick tops and bottoms. And I can just tell you right here from experience, it's a recipe for disaster. All right, I'm going to repeat that again. Picking tops and bottoms is a recipe for disaster. I've been trading 36 years and I know firsthand how difficult it can be. I know there are traders that do make a good living off of trading this, but they're seeing something or they have this innate sense of when a top or bottom is, is being uh, you know, projected. It's very difficult to teach that to students. So it's much easier to trade with the trend. As I stated, when I first was on the floor, I tried to pick tops and bottoms and uh, it, it would be great for a, a few trades and then I'd give everything back on the next trade. And so after a year of trading this way, I had nothing to show for all my hard work. And I don't want you to go through that as well. I know there are probably many of you traders that are looking back over your past 10, 20 trades or the past couple of months and you're seeing that, you know, I'm not doing well at all. I'm losing. I can't seem to get forward. Every time I have a new idea or a new approach, I give it all back. So my goal is to teach you how to trade with the specialist edge and that's rooted in simplicity and it's also made to get you consistent. All right? We're not looking for home runs, even though we may have those from time to time. Our goal is to have you consistent in your trading so that you can be trading 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Okay, so that's my goal. And once again, if you have any questions, kindly wait till the very end of the presentation. So let's begin. Here's what you're going to learn today. I'm going to present you with two edges. All right? The first edge is a proper RSI setting. Now, the RSI is a very simple indicator. It's probably found on 99.9% .9 of all charting software packages. Okay, I'm going to show you the proper setting for that because in our opinion in specialist trading, the majority of people use this indicator incorrectly. And then I'm going to show you the second edge and how we should use it, not as an overbought, oversold tool, which is, once again, how the majority of people use this indicator. Uh, overbought and oversold, in my opinion, doesn't exist. There's no such thing as that. We're going to show you how to use the RSI as a directional tool. Okay, So, let's start. Once again, we're beginning here. If you have any questions, kindly write them down. <coughs> Excuse me. What, let's go into the first edge, which is a proper setting. As I stated, the RSI is a great tool. It's virtually on any charting software packages, but we feel that the majority of all traders use it incorrectly. In other words, they use it as an overbought, oversold type of oscillator where once we get into overbought conditions, we should sell, and when we get to oversold conditions, we should buy. All right? And that, once again, is the way I used to trade, so I know firsthand that every once in a while that will work. But when it doesn't work, it's a disaster, and you give everything back. So what I'm going to start off with is showing you some charts and I'm going to show you some older charts. I, I know there may be a year or so old, and a lot of people will say, well, this is you know, not even in tune with what we're doing right now. I'm showing you these older charts just for educational purposes so that you understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, we're going to show you some charts that happened within the last month or so where this technique worked perfectly. All right, so here's the setting we want. The RSI should be edited from a standard 14-period RSI to a five period setting. In other words, whatever charting uh, software you're using, you should have an edit box for your RSI tool, your RSI indicator. Once you have that, go into that edit box and the standard uh, default setting for the RSI is 14. It should be now changed to read five. That just means that instead of going back 14 bars to come up with our calculations, we just want to look back five bars to come up with our calculations, okay? So whatever you're looking at, a daily bar, a weekly bar, or a five-minute bar, it's just going to take a look back five time periods. All right, so let's look at an older chart here of the British pound. As you can see here, this is an older chart, but we have a lot of movement going on from higher to lower to back up to back down and then higher again. Now, here's the standard 14-period RSI. As you can see, it's not very dynamic. It's within the threshold, so it's not really giving you any clues as to what to do. As long as it's in these parameters, uh, you know, we're really not sure how to use it. Even in an overbought, oversold tool, how, how do we apply this here? It's not very dynamic, once again. It's very uh, static, and it's just uh, kind of going sideways on a horizontal pace. 
So let's change this to our new setting from a 14 period RSI to a 5 period. And you now see how it's much more dynamic, how we have a lot more action to work with. Not saying that we know exactly what we're doing at this point, but it's just basically telling us that what we're trying to do is we're trying to look for a little bit more movement, a little bit more volatility so that we can you know, come up with some type of application rather than using the standard 14 period. So once again, this is an old chart of the British pound, but we want to change the RSI to read five periods. Okay, This should be, from now on, your standard setting for the RSI. Uh, totally forget about the 14 period and go to a five period RSI. Now, we want to edit the standard overbought, oversold thresholds to 50. All right, that's what we're doing now. So we have these standard overbought, over, oversold thresholds of, I believe, 70 and 30. And so people say, okay, well, we get above 70, we sell, we get below 30, we buy. No, we're not going to use this again. We're not looking for overbought or oversold. The way my mentors taught me is they said, Steve, there is no such thing as overbought, oversold. You know, overbought, oversold, once again, works until it doesn't work. And then you give everything back. So what we want to do is get rid of those 30 and 70 thresholds and just make one threshold at 50. That's the median right in the middle. So if we look at a chart again of the British pound, here's where the standard overbought and oversold thresholds are. All right? And here is the five period RSI. What we want to do is get rid of these and just make one in the middle, which is 50. Okay? Now, some, some charting software packages won't allow you to, to get rid of 70 and 30. If you can't do that, then just plot a line in the middle at the 50 threshold, okay? So you have three lines instead of just one. But all we want to make sure is that we are seeing where the 50 line is. Okay, we got that? So that was our first edge. So now we have the proper setting, okay? That's a tremendous edge we've just been giving you for free. That's usually reserved for members of specialist trading, but we've shared that with you on the proper usage of the RSI. Change it to a five period setting and only use the 50 threshold. Get rid of the 70 and 30. Now let's go on to edge number two. We want to use the RSI as a directional tool. Remember, we're not concerned with overbought and oversold. I can virtually tell you stories and stories of how well trading overbought and oversold worked for me and I can then tell you how one trade wiped it all out. So we don't want that in our trading. We don't want this type of roller coaster in our P&L. What we want is consistency. We want Two steps forward, one step back. And so we're not trading overbought, oversold. We're looking for a directional tool to tell us the direction of the trend. All right, so here's how you're going to use this. If an uptrend is in place, this is what we're looking for. You may want to write this down. Once again, I believe uh, that uh, FX Read is, is uh, recording this presentation, so you can go back later on when they post the recording. But if you want to write this down, if we're in an uptrend, here are the things, the requirements that must be met. First of all, the price of the currency pair, regardless of the time frame, if it's a five-minute chart or if it's a weekly chart, it doesn't matter. Price must close above the 50-period simple moving average. Okay, So we want to plot a 50-period simple moving average. And we have to see that price is now above. In other words, the closing price is above the 50-period simple moving average. All right, next... We want to see the five period RSI cross above the 50 threshold. So in other words, we want to see that it was below 50 and it now crosses up above so that the indicator, the RSI tool, is now closing above 50. Okay, that 50 threshold in the middle there. Now, if we have these two things in place, we will most likely find that a strong upward direction is likely as long as the five period RSI closes above that 50 line, that 50 threshold, for a minimum of five bars. So we want to see it close above that 50 midline for a minimum of five bars. Once again, this can be five five-minute bars, it can be five one-minute bars, or it can be five monthly bars. It does not matter. All right, so let's go through this step-by-step -step so that you fully understand this process. All right, step one. We want to see the currency pair close above the 50-period simple moving average, regardless of what time frame we are looking at. So here's an older chart of the Australian dollar, once again. And for all intents and purposes, the majority of price is closing above the 50 period simple moving average. We had one bar here where we closed below. But all we're interested in is that at the time that the RSI crosses above, we are above the 50 period simple moving average. So we're above the 50. That's rule number one. Step number two, the five period RSI must now cross above 
the 50 threshold. Okay? So once price is above the 50 period simple moving average, then we go to the indicator and we want to see the 5 period RSI cross and close above the 50 threshold. All right, so here we see price is above, and at the same time we had the RSI below, and it crossed back above. So now it's closed above, and it corresponds with this bar right here. All right? So those are two requirements that are now in place. Step number three, we're going to have a strong upward direction. It's most likely that we'll have a strong upward direction as long as the five-period RSI closes above the 50 threshold for a minimum of five bars. So you want to see the RSI above the 50 line for a minimum of five bars. All right, so let's count. Here was our first, as we see here, we had the RSI below and then it went above. So that's bar number one, two, three, four, and five. So even though we numbered the currency pair, it's the RSI that is actually above this 50 line for a total of five bars, okay? So, right there, that's your clue that most likely, not guaranteed, remember we cannot guarantee anything in any type of trading activity, but we have an edge here now, all right? An edge is giving us a high probability for success. So, most likely, now that price is above the 50 periods of the moving average, and now that the RSI has closed above its 50 line for five bars, most likely we're going to have a strong upward trend. And, as you can see, look what happened. In the next month, the Australian dollar roughly went up about uh, seven or 800 pips just off that great edge and that great clue. Here's another example. Here's a weekly chart of the euro dollar. Once again, an older chart. We're using this just for uh, educational purposes so that you fully understand the process. But as you can see here, the RSI tool is below its 50 line. And then right here, it closes above. And the currency pair, the weekly chart of the euro dollar, closes above the 50 period moving average right here. So this counts as bar number one. Bar number two, three, four, five, because they're all above the 50 threshold. And then look what happens. On a weekly time frame, the um, euro dollar went up around 1,200 pips in the next three or four months. How about intraday? On a four hour chart, 240 minute chart, we see here that Price was above and then oscillated back below, but then ultimately the uh, five period RSI crossed above the 50 threshold and price closed above the 50 periods of moving average. So this counts as bar number one, two, three, four, five, because the RSI was above 50 for five consecutive bars. So we should have a nice upward trend in the Canadian dollar on an intraday chart. And as we see here, we have a nice upward movement. Okay? probably about 150 pips or so in the next day. So this is a great, great tool for telling us the direction. Remember, it's a directional tool. Uh, you notice I did not say this is a strategy. This is a directional tool because once uh, you know the direction of the market you're trading, the currency pair, it just makes everything so much easier. Now you can apply a strategy that goes in that direction. Okay? What most people do is we're in an uptrend and they're either listening to some TV commentator or they're in some chat room where someone says, oh, uh, this uh, currency pair is too high. It's time to short it. It's time to exit. Well, we don't you know, believe in that. We just listen to the market. If the market is telling us that it's going higher, we're going to go with it. We're going to buy along with it. We're, looking, we're going to apply a strategy or a technique that tells us when to get in on the upside if we're in an uptrend. And then conversely, if we're in a downtrend, we'll look to go short or to sell. All right, so since we talked about downtrend, let's look at those same rules for using the RSI as a directional tool to the downside. They're the exact same rules for, for uptrends, but we just reverse everything and point it lower. Once again, I see some people may have some questions. If some people attended the presentation later, please remember that ask your questions at the very end so we don't slow down the presentation. So if you have any questions, just write them down, and I'll comment on them on, at the very end of the presentation. Now, if we're looking for a downtrend, we just need to flip everything upside down. So we now need to see the currency pair price close below its 50 periods of moving average, okay? Regardless of time frame, if it's a five-minute chart, a four-hour chart, or a monthly chart. Once it closes below the 50 periods of moving average, the price, we also want to see the five period RSI cross below the 50 threshold. Okay, so now it must be below the 50 threshold. If we have these two things in place, 
Most likely, a strong downward direction is likely as long as the five period RSI closes below the 50 threshold for a minimum of five bars. So we want to see these two things in place, price of the currency pair below the 50 periods of the moving average, and we want to see that the five period RSI has crossed below the 50 threshold and that it's remained there below the 50 threshold for a minimum of five bars. If we have all these things in place, this is a ripe environment for a strong downward direction. Okay, here's an older chart of the Swiss franc. As we can see, price is well below the 50 periods of the moving average. So there's really no question as to where price is. We're well below, the, all, all price bars have closed below the 50 periods of the moving average. As we see here, we had the RSI indicator, the five period RSI above the 50 threshold. But at this point right here, we crossed below. So that would count as bar number one. So we want to be below for a total of five bars, okay? And it must close below. We want to see five closes in the RSI below the 50 threshold. At the same time, we want to see five closes in the Swiss franc below the 50 periods of moving average. And so as you can see here, we count one, two, three, four, five. All conditions are met. So this is telling us that most likely we're going to have a strong move to the downside. And look what happened, okay? As you can see, we moved lower. See how simple this is? You don't have to rely on listening to the uh, economic news. You don't have to worry what's going on around the world. Don't have to worry about tons and tons of indicators. Don't have to worry about what some guy is saying in a chat room, if you trust him or not. Just listen to the most important thing you should be listening to, which is the market in front of you. This is what was taught to me. I, once again, I traded like 99.9% of all traders. I, I was following far too much fundamental news. I was involved in too many trading rooms. I had tons of indicators on my screen. I was trading too many markets. My mentor said, Steve, simplify your trading and you'll ultimately get on that road to consistency. So that's what my goal is at Specialist Trading. It's to simplify your trading and use only what really works, what has a high percentage that you can teach people so that they can spot on their own, not so that they're reliant on listening to what someone says or what someone trades. Here's another chart of the uh, weekly chart, I should say, of the dollar yen. As we can see here, price is oscillating below and above the 50 period simple moving average. But once the RSI closed below, the 50 threshold, we see here that we just about closed just barely below the 50 period simple moving average, okay? We had a total of five bars below and we were below the 50 threshold for five bars. So this was a weekly chart telling you, remember this is an old, old chart telling you though that you should be going short the dollar yen on an investment type of basis looking at weekly charts. And look what happened. The, uh, the yen fell out of bed uh, roughly about, uh, looks like a thousand pips. How about an intraday chart, the Euro Yen, okay? Once again, at this point, price crossed below the 50 period simple moving average, so now price is below, and at this point, the RSI crossed below its 50 threshold. So we counted for a total of five bars below the moving average and five bars below the 50 threshold, telling us on a four hour chart that most likely the Euro Yen is going lower, and look what happened, okay? So remember, you can use this even if you want it on a five minute time frame. I'm just trying to really cherry pick some great examples so that you really fully understand the process. As I stated in the beginning, we're an educational company, so I'm really trying to teach you how to spot these with real perfect examples so that you'll be able to use this technique and apply it as early as today if you'd like. All right, so those were older examples. They were just mainly for educational purposes so that you fully understand the process. Let's look at some current examples. Let's see how this would have worked within the last month or so, okay? Let's look at a chart of the British pound. Now, this one is going back to uh, a couple of months, a month and a half ago in February. It's safe to say that price was below the 50 period simple moving average, okay? So we didn't have to worry about where price was going to be in relation to that. Now we just need to see that price being above that 50 threshold in the RSI now price goes below, the indicator price goes below. So once that cross below and price of the British pound was below the 50 periods of moving average, this can be labeled bar number one, okay? So we want to see a total of five consecutive RSI closes below this 50 threshold. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So, so far we haven't done anything. We don't really uh, you know, have a strategy in place, but we have a real strong edge now, an edge better than any 
trading your chat room and edge better than any uh, indicator or fundamental uh, announcement. Here is the edge coming from the market itself telling us get ready to go short and look for a strategy to apply to me because the British pound is going lower. So look what happens. In the next month, the British pound fell down over 600 pips and all you had to do was look for a strategy to go short. Now, we, that's what we do. We teach and we apply strategies to the markets in the direction and there are a number of places here you could have gone short using our particular strategies. All right, let's look at the Canadian dollar, okay? Let's see here that we are obviously above the 50 period simple moving average. So this is telling us that we're looking for some type of an uptrend because price is above the 50 period simple moving average. Now we see the uh, RSI is oscillating below, above, below, and then once it goes above, we can count this as day one. Now here it went above, as you see here, this would have been day one, two, and then ultimately we went back below. So you have to start the count over again. So it went back up again right here. So this would apply as day number one. All right. So we want to see five days of the Canadian dollar above the 50 period simple moving average and five closes of the RSI above the 50 threshold. So we count one, two, three, four, five. Now, so far, we haven't done anything. But once again, we're not listening to fundamental news. We don't care what's going on in the world or what some economic indicator said. We don't care about that. It's making trading too complicated. Plus, you, uh, an economic indicator comes out. You have a million and one ways in which to uh, define it. Someone says, oh, that's bullish. Another one says, that's bearish. Rather than do that and confuse your trading, just look at the market. The market's telling you there is a tremendous, tremendous edge here that the Canadian dollar is most likely going higher in the short term. So we're getting ready. We look for a strategy to apply to go long. And as you can see here, we had a really nice upward move in the Canadian dollar. Now, I know a lot of traders at Specialist Trading, a lot of our members like to find this on a uh, certain chart, a certain time frame, and then they'll go to the smaller time frame to look for signals. So you, you would have seen this on a daily time frame, and then you would have gone possibly down to a four-hour chart, or maybe even an hourly chart to look for a signal, to look for an actual entry point. There's lots of different ways to do this. But the Canadian dollar in the next few weeks went up 300 pips. How about a scenario like this? This is a current chart of the Australian dollar up into the 15th, which was uh, Monday of this week. And as you can see here, there's really no edge because the market is kind of oscillating above, going back lower, going above, lower, and it's being reflected in the RSI tool. The five-period RSI goes below, goes above, so there's kind of a whipsaw effect, as you can see here. It's not giving us any clear direction. The RSI, even though the, uh, I should say, the currency pair price is staying above the 50-period uh, simple moving average, the RSI is not getting us any clue as to being above there for five counts or more. So we really don't have much to do. But if we look at the last day here, if we take this last day where the Australian dollar really fell out of bed and closed below, how could we have taken advantage on a volatile day such as that? Well, let's take this day, which was uh, the 15th, which was Monday. Okay? And as we see here, there's really nothing we could do using our technique because we need to have a total of five days uh, below the 50 period simple moving average and five RSI closings below 50. But if we went to a smaller time frame, let's say we went, once we saw this day or, or we saw the makings of this day in place, we could have gone to an hourly chart. Okay? Now, this was still the day before. This was still the 14th of April. Okay? Or we, we would have called that uh, Sunday, coming into Sunday trading from Friday. And we see here that an hourly chart, we were well below the 50 period simple moving average. And we closed below that for a total of five bars, and the RSI tool was below the 50 threshold for a total of five bars. So coming into the 15th on an hourly time frame, we knew that we had, on an uh, intraday basis, a high probability downward move. So you could have taken advantage of that very easily by knowing in advance by going to a smaller time frame, and there was a quick 132 pips in the next day. Okay, number of ways I can just look off site here. I can see about two or three signal entries using our different strategies where you could have gone short on an hourly time frame in the Australian dollar. How about on a weekly chart? Let's look at the weekly chart of the dollar yen. Okay, now we all know that the dollar yen has been going straight up or went straight up uh, starting uh, at the end of last year into this year. How could we have taken advantage of that? Well, a lot of people were, you know, waiting for fundamental news or were waiting for indicators or waiting to see what their trading guru was telling them. At Specialist Trading, we teach you only to focus on what the market is telling you. We had five consecutive closes in October, November 
above the 50 period simple moving average on a weekly time frame. Okay? Five consecutive closes and the RSI closed five consecutive times above the 50 threshold. So as early as the middle of November, we were telling our members that there's most likely a very strong upward move coming in the dollar yen. And so we all know what has happened coming into April. Okay, this is a weekly time frame. So you could have seen this strong uh, trending market in the dollar yen way before it happened. And then you could have gone to a smaller time frame to apply a strategy. And there you could have had over 1,600 pips in your favor to the upside. All right, so let's review, okay? Edge number one, we gave you two edges today, usually reserved for our members of specialist trading, but we want to teach you when we do these presentations. We thank you for attending, so we want to give you something that you actually you can start using as early as today. So we gave you two edges. The first edge is a proper setting for the RSI. Most people, in our opinion, use the RSI totally incorrect. They use it as an overbought, oversold tool, and I know that firsthand because that's the way I used to use it. And it worked great until it didn't work. And then when it didn't work, I gave everything back. So I had nothing to show for all my, you know, seven or eight great trades. I would give them all back, all the money I made, in one trade. So we want to have the proper setting for the RSI, which is get rid of the uh, 14 threshold or 14 default setting and change it to a five period setting. And then our second edge is we want it, now that we have a proper setting, we are using it as a directional tool. Remember, probably one of the most intelligent and most insightful things my mentors taught me on the floor was that, Steve, there is no such thing as overbought and oversold. We've all seen currency pairs go sky high for weeks, if not months, while they're in oversold ter territory. And we've all seen currency pairs go, continue to go lower and lower for weeks, if not months, while they're in over, oversold territory as well. So it, it just does not make any sense to try and pick when the bottom is or when the top is, okay? It really is a recipe for a disaster. So better than trying to pick tops and bottoms, use this as a directional tool to tell you, give you a strong edge as to direction of the market. I mean, most traders, that's half the battle right there, being in sync with the market. Go back and look at your last trades. I can most likely tell you that the reason if you had losers is because you were out of sync with the market. You were selling when you should have been buying and vice versa. So it's much easier to swim downstream with the current at your back as opposed to being swimming upstream. Now here's what you're going to learn next month because as I stated at the beginning of this webinar, this is part one in this series. Now next month I'm going to show you an actual entry technique, a technique you can use to enter while using this great edge. Okay, so we're going to get one step closer in becoming a full-fledged strategy on how to actually trade with this technique. So be sure and come next week. We don't have the date set yet, I believe. I believe it's in the beginning of May, possibly. But uh, be sure and attend next week because we'll show you how to incorporate this great edge and then how to enter. Okay? But remember, we're just giving you one piece of the puzzle to a strategy. In order to trade, in order to trade with consistency using this technique, you need to have a full fledged strategy. In other words, a strategy that tells you where to enter, but also tells you where to place your stop. It also tells you where you should exit. Okay? These are all things you have to have in place before trading. So many traders lose because they say, well, uh, this chat room said I should go long, so I bought here. I bought the Australian dollar. Well, where, where's your stop? Where do you exit? Well, I don't know. I'm just kind of watching. That's a totally improper way to trade. What you need is some structure, some guidance, some type of plan. And this is what we do, if I can take a few seconds, what we do at Specialist Trading. As you see here, this is my home page. We offer courses in not only Forex trading, but stock and e-mini trading as well. We offer courses where we have upwards of 10 specific strategies for each specific market. And what I'd like to do, uh, share with you today, because uh, we want to thank you for attending, is to give you a great discount on probably one of our premier strategies for trading the Forex markets. That's strategy number five. Now, this course usually runs for $5.95, which is tremendously inexpensive in itself. But for all the FX Street attendees today, we're reducing it down to $3.45. Okay? Now, if you become a member and decide to uh, join with us for this incredibly low price, uh, you'll be trading a strategy that has over 130% gains in just two years. You get immediate online access. You don't have to wait for anything to be shipped to you. Detailed instruction, and I tell you in this instruction where to enter, where to exit, and where to place your stop. This also comes with one year of trade signal alerts. So uh, you'll know exactly on a daily basis where, to, uh, where a signal has been generated, but I can almost guarantee you that over a few months you'll know how to spot them on your own. 
You get a PDF of the rules. And then lastly, most importantly, you get my personal email address so you have access to me 24-7 whenever you'd like to email me. Uh, and I can answer any question you may have. Now, this uh, is a, probably our more... Uh, our, most uh, uh, premier strategy that we have for trading the Forex, this is probably the most consistent out of all. And I'm going to show you some actual signals that were generated using this. In the Australian dollar on the 5th of February, all of our members were instructed to go short. And you, as you can see here, we immediately went down 240 pips within the next few weeks. Another signal that was generated, as we look back here in time, we had a signal using the method I told you today about finding the trend. We also had a signal to go long the dollar yen using strategy number five with all the entries uh, and all the stop placement. Had you traded our most aggressive way of trading this, you could have logged in at easily 1,100 pips. So I look forward to you becoming members of Specialist Trading. I look forward to you picking up strategy number five. Remember, if you want more information, go to the microsite that FX Street has so kindly provided for us. As you see, the portion in blue is the long link we've abbreviated to the portion uh, in yellow at the very bottom. And so that's the one you should copy down right now if you want to go. For more information on our strategy courses and on myself and uh, anything uh, regarding specialist trading, just click on that link and it will take you to this page right here. Okay? So you can see where course descriptions is highlighted. You can simply click on that link and we'll give you a lot more information about each of our different Forex courses. All right. Thank you for waiting. If you had any questions, now is the time to ask. Just really quickly, if you want to just do some more exploring, you can go to our sister site, which is ProTraderStrategies.com. That's where basically we sell individual strategies. If you want to speak to someone, speak to our VP of Operations. That's Brett Marsh at BrettM at SpecialistTrading.com or call us directly at 310-844-7220. I'm going to look at the uh, chat box here. Hopefully, I'll have time to answer all your questions. Let me just uh, open this up. I'll expand it a little bit. Okay, uh, let me see here. Um, someone was saying, uh, Element, so Forex is more interesting for you, uh, for me now. Uh, the Forex, uh, the reason why I, I really am interested in Forex markets, as I stated, it's been my experience since I've been trading for 36 years. I started on the floor roughly 36 years ago of the stock exchange. Most traders, you know, once again, like to trade tops and bottoms. It wasn't until I started trading with a trend that my trading became consistent. I've traded the stock market. I continue to trade the stock market. The e-mini markets, I trade those as well. And the Forex markets. Out of all these markets, regardless of time frame, the Forex markets, in my opinion, are the best trending markets. Therefore, they fit in perfectly with all my strategies and techniques. So uh, that's why I, I you know, have an affinity for the Forex markets because my techniques seem to work tremendously well with them. Okay? There's nothing, I'm not going to guarantee you that you become a millionaire using my strategies, but this is what I use personally in my own personal trading as well. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, Stephen, uh, those examples you showed are set on higher time frames. I'm a scalper. Would this trend re recognition set up work on five-minute charts? Sure. Uh, I, I don't know. You may have come in a little late, but as I stated, this works in any time frame in any direction. The only thing I would suggest, though, is that uh, five-minute time frame is good. I would almost suggest going to tick bars because you're going to see these really nice trending moves much better uh, using a tick bar time frame or a range bar as opposed to a minute bar once you get smaller time frames. Okay? When you get to higher time frames such as four-hour charts, hourly charts, four-hour charts, or daily charts, then you can use a standard time. But once you're intraday trading, we're talking about you know, a matter of minutes, I seem to find much better uses of this tool on a tick bar or a range bar. So you may want to experiment with that. Okay? There's no one time frame that works the best. It's just ways in which to uh, you know, increase your chances for success. Okay? Um, uh, from Gabriel, he asks, uh, can this be used with the 50 period line of stochastic also? Yes, you know, uh, a lot of people like to use stochastics. Uh, that's fine. I find it works better with the RSI, but you're correct. It can work with the stochastics. But with the stochastics, there's a lot of, you know, with the slow and the fast, there's a lot of different complications on how to, to where to format it. It's very simple with the RSI. You simply change the 14 period default to 5 period. 
So I like the simplicity of using the RSI as opposed to the stochastics. You know, the stochastics, there's the, the slow indicator, there's the fast, there's different, there's a slow uh, stochastic, there's a fast stochastic, there's a lot of different things to take into consideration. Very simple with the RSI. You just change 14 to read 5, and that's it, okay? So it's up to you. Uh, we do have members that use it with the stochastic and have success, okay? But I, I just personally don't use it myself, so I can't really comment a lot about it, okay? Uh, another question, what happens if we see the RSI staying below the 50 threshold but starting to point up? When we, we, would we consider the strong bias over? This is a very good question. So let's say you're in a strong downtrend, okay? If you're in a strong downtrend and it's working right, and then the RSI starts to head up, and in fact, it pops up and closes above 50. This is your clue that most likely that trend is over. This does not mean to exit the trade because the, the RSI can quickly go back down below 50. So we teach you in the courses different places of where to place your stop so you can ride the trade, so you can follow it down, and you can continue to, to capture those long trends if it continues lower. Many times you'll have a blip in the opposite direction, which is just a, really a pullback, and then it'll continue in your desired direction. So just because the RSI closes above 50, we don't want you to exit the trade if you don't want to. So we have standard generic exits once you're in, using our strategies where you can just get out and that's it. Or we have uh, ways in which to squeeze as much gain as possible. These are all taught, all these techniques and tips are taught within the course. Okay, but that's a very good question. Uh, what is the success rate of using the directional RSI uh, 5 plus? Well, this, when you say success rate, that only applies to a trading strategy. Okay, so a trading strategy has all the rules and has all the, the uh, elements uh, of structure to it so that you can quantify it and you can come up with some type of success rate. When you're using an indicator or a, a tool, you know, you cannot quantify and say, well, what's the success rate? Well, what, what time period? Uh, you know, uh, how are you using it? So this is just a great, great tool that gives you an edge. All right? The success rate only comes when you're actually trading. Okay? The success rate doesn't come when the, the trend goes in your favor because that's subjective. Remember, we're an educational company. It's not our job and it's not our motivation to provide you with statistics and with numbers. It's our job to provide you with sound education that has stood the test of time that works. I know I use this technique all the time in my trading. So, uh, you know, once again, you can only ask for stats or for success rates if you're talking about a strategy. Now, the one strategy that we're, uh, you know, uh, promoting to give you that great discount on, that has a success rate uh, of roughly about 65%. Uh, and also, uh, the gains were over 130% in two years. So we have numbers for that. But talking about an indicator, uh, I don't believe there's a way to actually uh, get uh, quantified numbers on an indicator. Okay? I hope that answers your question. Uh, from Jury asks, what if the RSI goes below 50 on the 6 bar after staying above 5 bars? That wasn't the case in the example shown. Yes, I think we just answered that, Jury. Remember, once again, the, if the RSI glo goes below, let's say you're in an uptrend, well, remember, that is telling you that most likely there isn't a trend happening since we just started the count, okay? So you'll have to start the count over again, okay? So that's, that's all it is. Remember, we're just looking for a trend to apply some structure to, all right? This is not a trading strategy. So if, say, you're on the sixth bar and it goes below, well, all right, nothing ventured, nothing lost. You didn't trade anything yet. You were waiting to see the beginnings of a, of a strong uptrend. And the RSI clock below, so nothing happened. Now, if the RSI goes back above, well, you start the count all over again. Okay? Same thing. You just reverse it if it were a downtrend. Okay? Uh, Boyke asks, is five your lucky number? Yes. Uh, a lot of people always ask me that. It's just that five seems to, it, it seems to work well. I know a lot of people like to look at, is that because it's Fibonacci or is that some superstition or that? No, it's just after years and years. Remember, I've been trading for 36 years. After years and years of looking at different time frames, different settings, five seems to, to be one that just, you know, really encompasses a lot. You know, I'm not going to say it's the perfect. You'll see other time periods that work well, but we're looking for consistency, something that works over uh, different time frames, different markets, and five, five seems to be a really nice setting. So it's nothing mystical, it's nothing magical, it's nothing Fibonacci, it's just, it's just a time period that seems to work well, or a setting, I should say. 
Uh, let me get some more questions here. Uh, Pan on Fire asks, is your course suitable for people with day jobs or higher time frames? Yes, in fact, it's, it's extremely suitable for those because as I showed you the strategy, our premier strategy, strategy number five, is basically you... If you want to trade it generically, which are what those results are based off, 130% in just two years, if you want to trade it generically, just simply enter your orders and walk away. You can check on it maybe during the day and that's it. We show you different ways in which once you get to a certain point, you can trade it conservatively and move your stop to unchanged. We tell you different ways to enter, different ways to exit. But once you decide, and, and this is what I do, uh, I walk with you hand in hand. I'm with you every step of the way. And we... We, uh, you know, fit the strategy to, to meet your needs. If you want it, if you're away at a, at a job, well, we, we tell you and, and instruct you how to trade it in that environment. If you're in front of the computer 24-7, well, then you can trade it differently. But this is what I do in my teaching. This is why we say we're educational course. We're with you every step of the way. And then we construct it so that you can trade it to meet your needs. Now, the, the great results we had with strategy number five were those results exactly if you had a day job. In other words, you would have placed your orders, walked away, maybe moved your stop to unchanged after certain requirements, and this kept your exit there. So either you were stopped out, breaking even, or you exited with a, tra uh, a nice gain. And that's it. It's really simple. Now, we have a number of traders who at the same time use the same strategy, strategy number five, on five-minute charts and have tremendous success trading this intraday. So that's the beauty of this. You can, if you're an intraday trader, this strategy works great. If you're a, a position trader, it works uh, consistently as well. Okay? So yes, I hope that answers your question. Uh, from Anish Prad to all participants, how do you backtest this strategy? Well, I, I kind of went over it right there. We only look at daily bars, okay, because we're not going to backtest it on five minutes and then on ten minutes. Once again, that's not our function. We would be virtually backtesting 24-7 if we were doing that because this, this strategies work in any time frame in any direction. So all we did is we kept results from actual signals that we generated to our members, showing them on where to enter on a daily signal based off of a daily bar, on your standard generic entry, on your standard generic stop, and on your standard generic exit. That's it. That's how we backtested it. And we, we used real-world signals. And had you followed us for the past few years, uh, most likely these are the results you would have gotten as well. Okay? Uh, let's see. We have some few more time here. Remember, if we happen to run out of time, I don't want to step on anyone else, another presenter that's speaking after me. If we happen to run out of time, here's the information to ask us any more questions or to call us up or to take advantage of that great special discount on that strategy. Now, you just saw that strategy number five issued signals to go short the Australian dollar last month and issued signals to go long the dollar yen. If you had traded that, the, just one of those signals, you could have paid for the course probably about four or five times over. So you'll see how inexpensive this is. It's a great, great strategy, plus you get all the mentoring and teaching from myself personally. Uh, Gabriel asks, uh, the ideal scenery is entering the trade on the first five bars with the RSI crossing above 50. No, once again, that's where you're right off the bat. This is not a strategy. You only enter trades on strategies, okay, and on systems. What I showed you today is a directional tool. So there is no ideal entry here because it's just like saying, where's the ideal entry with the uh, moving average? Well, the moving average is just a tool. It's not a strategy. So... Look next month when we do the presentation, I will only show you an entry technique. But if you really want to know the rules to entry, the ideal entry, purchase strategy number five because that will show you all the different ways and all the different, uh, uh, just different ways you can apply our entry process. Okay? Let's see here. Um, Stephen, would you consider important the uh, alignment respect several time frame? Let's say if the five minute chart is below 50, but the one-hour chart is above 50, should we wait for one hour to be aligned the same way? Yes, this is a, a very good question, and I always I get this question probably every time I do a presentation, and it is perfectly admissible to do that. In other words, look to see what's happening on the hourly chart. Make sure that you're in line with that, and then go to the five-minute chart. That is fine. I would say a good majority of our students use this technique with all of my strategies, okay? They use the higher time frame to confirm the lower. Now, if you're asking me personally, do I use this technique? No, I do not. Because in my 36 years, I have not found any consistency with this. And what I do find is that 
I, I tend to miss a lot of trades. And I don't like that because my time is really valuable. I'm giving webinars like two or three of these a day. I'm teaching. I'm also answering emails. And I'm trying to trade. So if I wait for that confirmation, I may miss a trade altogether. So personally, there is nothing wrong with that. I don't want you to think that that's an uh, incorrect way to use this. I personally don't use that way, though. I, I seem myself to have better success just taking the chart for what it is. If I'm looking at a five-minute chart, I just use the information on that chart to tell me what to do. If I'm looking at a weekly chart, I only use that information. But I don't combine the two. Once again, this does not mean that that's not correct. You can use that. We have a number of students at Specialist Trading that swear by that technique. Okay? I think I have time roughly for one more. Um, let me just see here. Okay, Steve uh, has been a great presentation uh, you did for us. Uh, thanks. Oh, you're, you're more than welcome. And one of the things I want to stress, I want to thank FX Street for giving me the opportunity. But as I stated in the beginning, we are an educational company. I know a lot of people like to look for statistics, for numbers, and we do provide those in a limited amount. But really, more than anything else, we stress education. Because there, in my opinion, after trading for so long, nearly 40 years, four decades, there is no one proper way to trade anything, any market. I think it's really a crutch when people go to a trading room and try to mimic exactly what the trader is doing there. There are so many traders that try to mimic what that trader is doing and they can't seem to make money. And I feel, after my years of trading, is that each one of us has a certain way to trade to fit our persona. So what I do is I provide you with a sound benchmark of a format of tools, tips, and techniques that have stood the test of time that work so that 75% of your strategy is rule-based. You must follow these rules. But then I give you 25% of discretion so that that's my teaching so that you can either use these conservatively, we can show you how to trade this conservatively, or you can trade the benchmark aggressively, you can trade it if you're at work, you can trade it if you're in front of the computer. So we show you a different way of ways to fine-tune it to fit your needs. Okay, so that's really, in my opinion, why a lot of traders lose is because they're trying to mimic someone else who has a different persona than them. Fit the personality to match your needs, and you'll, or I should say, fit the strategy to match your needs and your personality, and you'll see that you'll get on that road to consistency. Okay? So this is really what we're trying to teach, and hopefully we'll instill in you as members of Specialist Trading. One last uh, question. Uh, Boyke is saying, so is the entry on the six bar? No, uh, the entry is not on the six bar. There's a certain uh, pattern or a certain type of indicator look you should find, and I will go into detail on that in next month's presentation. Okay? Thank you so much. I really look forward to you taking advantage of that great deal. Remember, if you have more questions, you can go to our sister site, which is ProTraderStrategies.com, or probably best just to email my uh, associate, Brett, at BrettM at SpecialistTrading.com, or call us directly at 310-844-7220. We'll answer any questions you may have. But remember, that special for strategy number five, our premier Forex strategy, is only going to last for a day or so. So if you really want to take advantage of it, please, please, uh, call us up or email us and we'll send you all the information. You can start trading it as early as uh, today if you'd like. Even though we tell you the paper trade for a while, you can get all the rules and everything as early as this afternoon. Okay? So I look forward to all of you becoming members of Specialist Trading. Thanks for so much for FX Street giving me the opportunity to speak. And thank you so much for taking time out of your Wednesday to come to this presentation. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.